Welcome to Rain Soap Making Tutorials. Today I'm going to demonstrate the stripe technique as well as a basic swirl technique. You can use any cold process soap recipe to do this technique. If you don't have a recipe, please consult my book or look at tutorial number one also on YouTube which has a recipe at the end. Mix your water and your caustic soda, always adding the caustic soda to the water and not the other way around and taking the temperature. Measure out all your fats and oils always remembering to tear the scale in between so that you're not measuring the container's weight and remembering that soap making is a chemistry process and accuracy can only come from accurate measuring. For this technique you are going to need a specialized mold which you'll see shortly. I have bought my mold through Aroma Greens in Taiwan on the internet. It has perspex divisions into a silicon base allowing you to pour stripes. You can make one yourself by using old cereal boxes and or the polystyrene bases that come under your fruit and vegetables, the trays, you can cut those to size and put them into your mold to create divisions. Melt all your fats and butters. I'm not in favor of the soap technique that says you should pour the hot caustic soda over the cold fats and then you're ready to go. Fats and oils all have different melting points and it's a far more accurate chemistry process if you if you melt them all together thoroughly and then add the caustic soda. Using your stick blender bring the, the soap to a light trace. A trace looks as though snails have been walking over your batter. You don't want a thick heavy trace. You want to buy yourself some time to get this technique right and so you want a very early, very light trace. I've pre-measured out some colors into little bowls, all natural colors, gla glacial muds and ochres, titanium dioxide, and I've added now some of the traced soap mixture to the color to stir up and to make sure that all the, the lumps are dissolved. I love this little gadget. This is a milk frother for cappuccino, but it's ideal just to give that little swirl onto the onto the colors and make sure that they're properly blended. Measure out four jugs of your soap base and add a color to each jug, making sure that you stir it in well. You can give them a, a quick blitz with the stick blender working from your lightest color up to your darkest color just to make sure that your colors are properly integrated into your batter. This is the special mold that I was talking about. It's very handy with the perspex divisions but as I said you can make your own. Carefully, carefully pour rows of different colors of batter into the mold. It's a bit tricky as you can see the thicker the soap has become the less likely it is going to be to make a neat line. You can alternate however you choose. You can do every second row, you can take some of the divisions out, you can play, make up your own design. When the mold is, is full, you're going to need to remove all the divisions. Pull them out gently. Don't worry about the slightly untidy top. 
then the end pieces. Give the mold a good shake to make sure that there are no air pockets. Bump it around a bit. Then just smooth off the top. Then take a chopstick and draw a swirl pattern through the soap. First of all going horizontally all the way down the loaf. There are many different swirl techniques. You could really do anything here. Go around the edges. Right, and your soap is ready to be put to bed. Wipe it off and you can cover the mold and wait for the morning. 24 hours later we get to unmold our soap and this is really the, the best part of the whole process. Gently pull the sides away of the silicone mold and tease the, the soap from the mold. Look at that beautiful pattern. That pattern will change depending on what you do with the chopsticks. Now, depending on how you slice these soaps, you've actually got two sides. You've got two completely different patterns, depending on whether you're slicing it through one plane or through another plane. The choice is yours. You really are spoiled for choice here in how you choose to cut these soaps. Remember they still have to cure for six weeks. They aren't ready to use straight after you've cut them. If you cut them the other way around, you can see the pattern is substantially different. And there you have a finished product. Another part of the mold delivered a slightly different looking soap. This one. Please look out for my book, The Rain Book of Natural Soap Making by Metz Press.